So it is 1133. I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so welcome to uh, Open Source Fundraising, Brainstorming, and Collaboration. I'm David Katz, Director of Library Technology at Villanova University. Also, of course, here representing the Viewfind Project. Uh, and I proposed this session because I thought WolfCon would be a good opportunity to talk amongst the projects and see if there were sort of common needs and goals. Uh, so I don't have a lot of structure plans. Uh, we'll improvise as we go. But uh, to start with, uh, just what I'm going to go through, I'll talk a little bit about why raise funds, because that was a question I had myself for a while. Um, I'll give a quick overview of what we've done in the Viewfind community, since that's what I've been involved in. Uh, beyond that, I don't claim to be any expert on this. Uh, and then I'll put forward some ideas for brainstorming and collaboration, and then we will brainstorm and hopefully collaborate. So uh, to get started, why raise funds? And really, there's only one answer, which is sustainability. But that answer breaks down into a, a bunch of things. Uh, it can help to pay for organizational memberships, such as becoming part of something like the OLM, so you can participate in events like this one. Uh, it can let you pay for occasional contract services. For example, you find is uh, going through a security audit right now just because we thought that would be a good proactive thing to do. Um, it can help with project infrastructure. There's lots of great free services out there for open source, but sometimes you want more than what you can get for free. Uh, and of course, maybe if you get enough, you can pay for staff. Uh, I think a lot of us are doing many jobs at once, and open source is just one part. It would be so wonderful to have people who just did this all day. So let's talk about what Viewfind's been up to. So Viewfind has been around for well over a decade now, and for most of that time, it succeeded without any dedicated funds, just on the enthusiasm of the community. And we still have an enthusiastic community that puts a lot into it. Uh, we also occasionally received some grants. We got a Mellon Award in 2008. EBSCO gave us some money for polio integration work. Um, but really, what motivated us to start thinking about fundraising was when we decided to join the OLF, which was in turn uh, related to thinking about sustainability. Uh, Viewfind started as a project at Villanova University. Villanova is still a major supporter of the project. But we didn't really want to be seen as the sole home of the project, because what if the current administration left, then where does the project go? So we wanted to get it somewhere safer that would still enable us to be as engaged as we already are. And that required some money on an ongoing basis. So we did what we needed to do to get into OLF, and that led us to where we are. Um, and so Viewfind now has a more formal governance structure than it used to. There's a project management committee. Um, and so that group has been talking about fundraising since it was formed, really, and we've made some strides. Uh, we created a registered service provider program where commercial entities that provide services related to Viewfind can, you know, give back to us for a favorable position on the website and sort of more visibility into our internal uh, conversations. You know, we, we are very consciously not a pay to get power kind of organization, but we are fine with pay for visibility. Um, and so we have now six registered service providers, and hopefully that will continue to grow. Uh, and of course, we also want to offer the opportunity for people to support us through memberships and donations. Uh, we have launched our first fundraising drive just to the general public uh, this summer, and we'll be talking about that along with uh, other of you find events at this conference, we thought this would be the best time to start saying, please give us money. Uh, so please give us money, viewfind.org slash donate. Um, so anyway, that's a little bit of background of what I've experienced in this space. So uh, to talk about brainstorming and collaboration, uh, you know, the first question is how can we as OLF members, as open source advocates, help each other? Um, and I have a few thoughts on that. One is that there might be opportunities where multiple projects could get together to write a grant and get funding because my experience with grants has been that if one person asks for something, they're less likely to get it than if two people with common interests ask for something. So I don't have a strong idea of what that would be yet, but 
it's it's good thing to keep in mind when looking at common interests across projects. And on a related note, how does the OLF support this kind of thing? How could it support this in the future as more and more projects uh, get involved? Is there anyone at the high level looking at and thinking about this? Should there be? How could we as projects support the OLF to do that kind of thing? And are there other resources that we could potentially pool funds for and share between the projects that we might not be able to do on our own, but that might be beneficial to all of us? And, you know, just throwing an idea out of the back of my brain, I thought, well, what if we had an internship program at the OLF where somebody could work across the projects and we have some funding to manage it or a stipend or something? Certainly at Villanova, we've had great uh, prog progress on you find made by having graduate assistants in the library. Maybe that's something that could scale up. Um, and then my, my last boring question is, what other topics in this space might interest you? Let's talk. Um, and then I'll just put up my contact details for a moment, because if you want to talk to me after this event, you can feel free to uh, email me or Slack me or I have Twitter on there. I haven't used Twitter in years, but it's a thing, <laughs> except it isn't. I don't know. Um, but anyway, that's that's the presentation part. And we now have, I believe, 50 minutes to talk about it. So uh, I have two people in the room here. Uh, I have more on Zoom. Uh, so let me end the slideshow. And oh, it's OK. Oh, and that will keep the, the slide of um, of your thoughts up because I thought that was helpful to oh sure to you maybe sure. Tagging on to those if I do. Let me see if I can find a way to do that and also be able to uh, see. Oh, uh, you're right. It's not we don't have to do that. I I think it's possible. Um, back this up to here, and then this way I can see the uh, the Zoom audience, but the ideas are still there. So um, I guess maybe we have a relatively finite number of people here. Um, maybe it would be worth quick introductions of who we are and what we're interested in. Uh, we could maybe start in the room and see if the room mics actually work well enough that the Zoom people can hear us. And then we could have the Zoom people uh, talk back. Does that sound reasonable? All right, yeah, I can start. I hope everyone can hear me. I see that people can see me at least. Um, my name is Julie Bickle. I'm an IT project manager at the LMU uh, University Library in Munich, Germany. I kind of have three jobs at the moment. My main job is with the LMU to get them to uh, move to Folio within the next few years. Um, as a Bavarian library, I'm also, we're also a member of the Bavarian Network. Um, and as a network, one of the six networks in Germany, library networks, and as a group, we're also working together and collaborating because we're all going to be moving actually to Folio from our old um, shared system uh, that the network manages for us. And my third job is uh, donated time to the uh, Folio project as a product owner in the uh, circulation area. Um, I unfortunately don't have a lot of experience really or to share about fundraising. Um, I was more interested in hearing and maybe adding on some thoughts on top. The big, maybe, I don't know if it's a challenge, I guess, it depends how you turn it, but we're public service. Um, that puts in very strict rules with money and what we are allowed to do and in what context and everything. Um, so we yeah, I apparently can't really donate anything or in certain situations. Um, but what I'm, I mean, myself as an example, um, we can give time. Does that make sense? How can that maybe, if we think of fundraising, I know that money is very important and I care about it very much to making sure that Folio and Ufine will also be using Ufine. Um, it's sustainable in the longer term. Um, yeah. Hearing ideas of um, so that somehow I probably we can't use a maybe one to one, but we somehow yes. participate in some fashion within our public um, service um, rules. I, I definitely would not underrate the value of time because money is yeah, no good exactly. if there's no one to pay to do what needs to be done. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, 
And before we continue, um, can I ask anyone on the Zoom call whether the audio is working well enough that you could hear that or if you just watched me nodding for a moment? No, the audio in the room is very, very clear. Al although the camera mode is switched, so now we're just looking at like the search bar on the projector. I'm not sure why it switched from room, but the sound is very clear, um, both from you and from the, the audience. The, the meeting owl just does what the meeting owl wants to do. So, um, you know, if, if Peter wants to introduce himself, he could try waving his arms. No, and doing some okay. exciting to see. I'll try to speak up a little bit to the owl and see if it focuses on me. No, it's going to ignore me. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, my name is Peter Murray. I'm the open source community advocate uh, at Index Data um, and do a lot of things with the uh, Folio project and the infrastructure uh, of, of this, and which is why I was late. I'm, oh, sorry. Um, uh, it was setting up the, the AV elsewhere and, and came here. Uh, but been working with open source uh, for a very long time, uh, now seven years with a vendor rather than with uh, somebody who takes advantage of open source. So, yeah. That's great. And if, if anyone in the Zoom would like to introduce yourselves, I guess I know Chris is there. So, uh, Chris, if you want to uh, start and then anyone else you'd like to talk, maybe raise your hand and then Chris can nominate one of you and you can nominate someone with their hand raised and so on until uh, everyone has either spoken or opted not to speak. I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but I'd be happy to hear from all of you. I think I know many of you. Certainly, I am Chris Halberg. I am the uh, the front end developer for the VFound project and at Falvey Library, and I work very closely with Damien, both uh, metaphorically and literally. This is maybe the farthest apart we've worked uh, in quite some time. And I don't see any hands raised, so if someone wants to introduce themselves, feel free to jump right in so that your your big head can be on the projector screen instead of mine. Awesome, I see some hands now. Let's start with Mario. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so my name is uh, Mario Trojan. I'm a lead developer for the information services department in uh, Tübingen, Germany. I'm also active in the Wufine community, taking part in developer calls and so on. Uh, so, um, yeah, um, should I also already talk uh, one or two topics about the fundraising, or do you want to make an introduction, continue the introduction first? Let's see. Um, we only have one other hand up at the moment, so uh, maybe we can finish introductions and... Uh, All right. Unless more decide to wave at us, we can start talking. <laughs> then maybe Helge can continue. He has uh, raised his hand quite a while now. So yeah, I am Helge. Um, I am the lead developer in um, Düsseldorf in Germany for Wufind. And um, yeah, I, I don't really know a lot about funding actually. So I'm just lurking here kind of in... Uh, Maybe I have some some hints, some ideas, but I, I am not the main one who, whom you could ask. Thank you for, for stopping in. Uh, we also have a, a newcomer in the room. If, if you're interested in introducing yourself, we all just sort of went through, or if you're just here to lurk, you can just lurk. CJ from Marmot Library Network. Oh yes, of course, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we can, uh, we have one more volunteer uh, for introductions on the Zoom, and then, yeah, I think we are ready to get into it. Okay, my name is Hajo. I'm working in, um, at the um, Hamburg University Library, and I'm working with Viewfind-based um, catalogs for quite some years now. Um, but just now I have been um, on sick leave for quite a time and I'm just um, attending for um, getting into the topics again. Great to see you. Thanks. All 
right, well, I think um, we, we are still having some people trickling into the room, but I think we can go ahead and uh, start the conversation rather than putting the spotlight on everyone who walks through the door before they've gotten themselves oriented. Um, so uh, what were your thoughts, Maria? Okay, so uh, one or two thoughts, maybe one thing that I want to mention rather than, than discuss it, um, uh, um, because um, as part of the German kind of Wufine community, uh, there is kind of a increasing expectation for us to um, talk with other, other parts and other libraries in Germany because um, like we have uh, shared funding and people have been developing their own projects uh, over the years. Of course, each everyone got, got its funding from the German uh, Research Society. Uh, and uh, now what happens right now is that the exchange between the uh, libraries is intensifying. So right now we also made some proposals for the next funding period 2024 to 2026. And there are also some topics that we will think about um, uh, or we, we will discuss acti actively in the community how to realize that and maybe instead of realizing something for our, ourselves, maybe we could also put that directly to find because it solves some kind of problems like uh, maintaining its compatibility over the newer WooFind versions and so on. Um, but what I wanted to, that's just for information, basically, we'll see what comes out. I'll keep you informed in the, in the community calls. Uh, it was also mentioned uh, by, I think, uh, our participant from Munich uh, that uh, it's it's kind of difficult for somebody in public service to make donations directly. So that's that's like more our uh, kind of way to try to support the community in a more active way. And um, the other thing is uh, what I wondered. Um, I mean, of course, there are like opportunities, uh, like more for organizations to. Uh, to donate over the websites and so on directly or via memberships and joining project management committees and so on. Uh, but I think uh, what I don't know yet, um, when I hear about more like crowdfunding, what's basically what we are trying to do, uh, uh, the, question, the question is, um, have you ever tried explicitly working with crowdfunding platforms like, I don't know, Kickstarter or something like that, where, where you just put interesting projects in and you have the uh, opportunity that also normal people that are ki kind of just stumbling across the project and see what kind of interesting things we do have uh, like, uh, yeah, also have the opportunity to kind of more, more randomly also donate donate money to, to the WooFind project. So yeah, that's more the question for you, whether you already tried that and uh, what you think of it. I think we're we're in fairly early days in you find land on fundraising. So I think we're starting with sort of the most obvious traditional things that people do, which are, you know, registered service providers just plain begging for money and seeing who gives us some. Uh, but I think crowdfunding is an interesting idea. The the factor there is that crowdfunding requires a specific plan and specific deliverables, which is not a bad thing by any means. I, I think that's good. But I think in order for a crowdfunding project to work, we would have to have some specific objective and some specific set of resources we need budgeted out. And then we could say, you know, help us hit this goal by this time, and then we can give this result. Uh, and I think really what we're doing right now, we're sort of dipping a toe in the water and seeing what we get. And I think as a result of that, it will enable us to see what we can do with the funds that we've raised and that will help us sort of calibrate for the future so we can say, you know, we received this much in 2023 and God enabled us to do this. So in 2024, let's do even more and then we can also do these things. So I'm at least uh, for now comfortable with starting at this, this relatively small level. Uh, and it, it also is tied to the fact that it, as we discussed a little earlier, money is great, but you also need people to do the work. And so, I want to see how this works, what, what the money actually buys us. Um, and fortunately, money in the bank is also worth something because we can start to sort of build up uh, our, our bank account and earn some interest and so forth. So, you know, I'm not looking to spend every dollar we get instantly. It will help us pay the bills that we need to pay and continue to brainstorm for you know, the, the sustainability of the project. 
But I think to Mario's point here, I wrote it down. I like the idea. I mean, I, I totally get it, as, as you mentioned, like, you know, it takes organizing the crowdfunding. And I'm trying to I'm trying to stop thinking like how it would work in my situation. <laughs> and that's not relevant. But I like this idea, especially with Viewfy. Um, when I think Viewfind will be our discovery layer. And so that's what that's actually what our users, our end users, our customers would actually experience much more in my case in Folio, which is actually for my for my colleagues when numbers is a tiny, tiny number compared to in our library we had uh, yeah, I think we have between five thousand students and I, you know, a couple thousand staff and stuff. Um and maybe yeah, you know, idea is like, hey, you use you find. Do you want to donate to you find for the development? Like, you know, as you said, further down the road when you're able to better formulate. But I actually quite like this idea of um, it not being just the people who, I don't know, what is it? Like the institutions who will use this, but if customers, so to speak, are interested in also participating or contributing because they use it as well um, as, as a user of my library, for example, then also why not? And certainly there, there is sort of some opportunity there to tie awareness raising about mm -hmm. library support for open yeah, technology. Exactly. And mm -hmm. even if nobody who is a student at your university wants to give mm -hmm. a, a euro to well, support yeah, it or exactly. whatever, at least they could see, oh, this is like something my school is actively involved in doing. It's not just something they bought. I mean, I don't know how much that tattoo of the library of <laughs> can't go on the, on the, on the shoulder costs, right? But you know, you could argue that no, donate that to the folio or to you find, right? Well then they pick that. I, I, that's, I mean, it's an intriguing idea. I hadn't mm -hmm. thought of it. using it, but... Kickstarter or Indiegogo or any one of those more mainstream platforms for fundraising. Um, and it, it makes me wonder if anyone else has tried it in, uh, well, just outside of the library community, uh, if, if anyone else has tried it uh, and might have advice for us on how to structure a, a campaign. I, I think you're right, Amy, that, that you know, it, it has, Deliverables, in this case, it's interesting because the deliverables aren't given to the end user per se. You know, we're not making a, a, a earbuds for you to yeah. be manufactured and, and buy, but, you know, the, the other forms of uh, acknowledgement that those kinds of projects do, you know, have your name printed in the manual or, or uh, show up in, in video credits. Uh, certainly has kind of an equivalent in, in the, the, the software space uh, as well. Um, it would be interesting to, to do some research and see if, if anybody else has yeah. tried anything like that and uh, or will be the first to try it. The, the other related thought is that you say we're not producing a thing, but really I think a lot of Kickstarters make their success through selling weird trinkets. So. Mm -hmm. You know, there might actually be something in that. I'm wearing a blue enamel pin that I got for this conference. And, <laughs> you know, Polio logo is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, there there might be the, the opportunity of building something that has swag incorporated. But then, of course, do you want to get into the business of producing and shipping merchandise? Yeah. Who does that? Yeah. And, and also, there are platform fees. There's, I think it's a complicated equation, but it is one worth, worth thinking about. Yeah. yeah. And certainly, yeah, like it probably wouldn't be the main source of funding, but if, if there's a way eventually, you know, to have it up and running, like mm -hmm. you might sell it too much, but as, as part of the portfolio of options. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about Polio, we have all these flower releases, so you could have a, a fundraiser for each each release and you get the exclusive flower pin for the flower <laughs> that no one else will ever have an opportunity to get that again. <laughs> <laughs> There's also the uh, Wikipedia um, method. Like oh, yes. People who go to, you know, viewfind.org to, you know, just a little yeah. drop down banner that says, you know, 
You can't do this for free. Think about donating. Mm -hmm. User enjoy food find it. And that gets rid of a lot of those expectations of mm -hmm. getting gear or right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can also put that, I guess, straight in the site versus going through platforms such as Kickstarter. Yeah, that, that's been very effective. I've given money to two things based on those those top things. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah one method. But one method I really like for that, um, there's a website called Darebees that does like exercise, um, like free like free information, and they have in the banner right on their website like their funding level. Of funding is low, funding is very low. Like we might have to stop producing material if you know funding doesn't come in. And I kind of I've always appreciated and liked that gentle pressure, and it's definitely been effective on me. That they don't necessarily have the Wikipedia banner that blocks what you're trying to look at, but as you reach the bottom of the page, as you're reading something or checking something out, you can see right there, oh, their funding's really low. They're gonna have to stop doing this for who knows how long uh, if someone doesn't donate. And I think that is a nice transparent, nice balance between pressure and transparency uh, from a project that is crowdfunded. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think one of the challenges maybe for, for us as a community is where like, we don't have necessarily a centralized place for those donors to go and spend the money from those that centralized thing. Certainly in the folio project, I know like the community council has said they don't want to be essentially kind of paying for staff or you know, and and this kind of thing. Then they they kind of want that to happen through actors already in the in the community um, or actors who join the community, but. But so individual institutions or individual companies, rather than them becoming a kind of clearinghouse of money to fund different things. And I think that's something we like the Kickstarter idea could could work in that sense because it could be down to an individual company to set up the Kickstarter and get funding for it. I think for uh, something like the donations, that's harder because like there is no central pot in which that money could go and then be distributed to the project. You know, it's like, whose who's pocket is that going in? And I don't think any of us, like, you don't want to kind of have a generic donated folio that then is going to, you know, my company or somebody else's company. Or because, so, I, I actually do have an idea and it's a very new one also here in our Bavarian network it came up a couple of weeks ago. Um, so we, we, as, as libraries, members of the network, we pay fees to our, um, to the network central, I guess, um, so that they, uh, so that they manage our, our, um, uh, OCLC system. And as LNU, we're one of the larger libraries, so we donate the most proportionally. Um, and so we don't yet know what this kind of funding, what these fees would look like, if any at all. We certainly know that licensing those fees are gone. And so the question is like, or the idea of the principle is like, well, why can't we use these fees for folio, yeah, right? So we still have a lot of things to deal with um, because I can imagine, you know, the first question is like, well, but if we don't have to spend this money, then why do we spend this money? I don't know how to organize, um, and it won't be me, but I, I so I think it was Helga's comments, I don't know much about funding. I don't either, but I need to make sure those who do get involved so that the funding can get flowing somehow. But what I can imagine is that, you know, Bavaria has a pot of money. Um, I assume we'll use it somehow to further our interests. But again, like was the, the Library of Congress was saying, assume a lot of our interests are also interesting, if not to our colleagues in Germany, but also maybe then to, if not worldwide, sorry, then probably at least to our um, colleagues in Germany, um, and maybe then to other people as well. And so I think we'll, I, I assume we'll never be able to get a super, at least folio, I think we've seen it, to get a centralized pot because of the rules and regulations from different areas of going into that. But I don't think that excludes proactively talking to each other to like what's out there who is working out there and even if it's and you know i'm just 
just using myself as an example also for the record, I'm not saying this is going to happen, um, but if in Bavaria we say, okay, we're going to work on this particular key buying setup, um, who's interested, we could still fund it, that doesn't mean, you know, other people can still participate from outside the requirements. And then to come back to the crowdfunding here, I don't think me as an, as an academic public service library in Germany can do that, but I don't know if there's a large city state library in the US who could probably do that. And then even if it's still, um, you know, they put it on their view buying site with their general public. Um, and we can still, you know, communicate and internally say, hey, there is this, there is this um, this link here. Um, we happen to use the same system too. So whatever goes to them in that state library, we will also be able to use it later on and to somehow get around the fact that even though it's not a common money pot, the people can still, we can still benefit from that. Yeah, and I, I think that that is an aspect of fund project fundraising that I have not even really considered that, you know, we can certainly put out the call through the project sites, but that that could be greatly amplified by participation of users. I mean, that would require thought about the right way to do it, and it would differ from every institution to every other, but there could be a way to coordinate that and, and magnify the effect. And I think that comes back to what Mario mentioned, and you know, that's it. The uh, we're seeing it in Folio, we're seeing it in Bavaria, and also a journal wide with Folio. The expectation to talk with one another and as much as possible collaborate, actually, that wasn't um, at all expected until I'd say nearly until Folio, more or less, Folio and New Fund. Um, and yet, yeah, the that I think fundraising, yes, it is the the act of either crowdsourcing or um, asking for grants and organizing it. And as you mentioned as well, I think a lot of the work is not just writing the grant itself, but finding um, allies to make the case so irresistible that they have to give us the grants. Um, that's also a fair amount of work right. in and of itself. Um, the finding the allies and finding a common story to then put together into the, into the grants. Yeah, I think the value of collaboration is very high. It, it made me sad to hear the words you find a disaster used in the same sentence in the opening session, but I, I think that, <laughs> that particular disaster was absolutely the result of not collaborating where, you know, early days, a fork of the software was made and then the community was left behind and it went its own direction and what if that happens too long it's hard to reconcile so. yeah. <laughs> we seem to have reached a lull in our our conversation <laughs> Is anyone online thinking of, of uh, anything that we should be talking about? I was hoping Peter would stay in the room because I was going to put him on the spot about what he thought about OLF internal mm -hmm. capabilities for supporting some of these things because I don't have as much visibility into what OLF is doing as, as some, and I think it would be good to, to know if this interests or resonates with with anyone there, but I also know they're a lean organization, so my expectations are well, not. Well, yeah, and I, think, and I think maybe that's it's more like the the, the balance of the expectations with the opportunity. Um, right. My my opinion only. I think probably expectation, not expect too much, because as you said, it's a lean organization. But also, I see also with Folio, right? It's essentially like um, you you know, if you want something to happen, you kind of got to do it. Um, expecting it would be a great idea but someone has to do it and if i don't know if they have the capacity to do that but if somebody has a good idea that doesn't scale across all libraries worldwide because of the way the world is and you still feel the need to somehow have a central place for your worldwide communication or you feel adding that extra name gives extra weight to your to your um to your request 
I, what it's worth, I, I'm sure, like, you know, you can ask them, right, for help. And I'm sure that at, at the very least they can provide visibility, um, if not actual, um, actual, um, I guess, manpower support. Visibility, but probably also a network of people that can help you, that you can just brainstorm, check against, or maybe that they can then, yeah, publicize or further allies then for your request. We do have a, an idea in the chat here. We have a, someone with a raised hand. Uh, go right ahead. Yeah, thank you, Chris. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure, uh, but um, one thing that came to my mind um, is long-term, Johannes Riedel, I am a software developer at the University of Tübingen and work closely with Mario. I think most of the people here know me. Um, have you ever thought um, if the, if the long-term and uh, sustainability aspect is a concern about setting up uh, some kind of Wufine foundation? So essentially, the what the OLF membership has gotten us is that Wufine is now its own independent nonprofit organization with its own bank account. So that's sort of the the first the first step in the process of you know when we receive funds they now go into that account and it's controlled by the viewfind project management committee you know prior to this when people donated money to viewfind it went to villanova university and didn't have its own separate accounting line and it was really challenging to keep track of it and use that money um so i don't know if that's exactly what you were asking but Uh, no, but what, what I was was thinking about uh, was, was just uh, maybe some some kind of legal institution that would make it easier for uh, institutions to contribute. I mean, um, in, as as to to the German part, it's it's all funded by the DFG, uh, the the German uh, Science Foundation, and these are midterm projects. Though it's it's always limited, and I I don't know whether or um, it has all that already been been mentioned that uh, direct financial contributions are are difficult, but uh, I I don't know whether some kind of uh, a legal shift or, or a foundation has um, uh, other possibilities in comparison to just fundraising for an for an ordinary uh, institution. That that was what what came to my mind. So it's like having choosing a. Is there maybe a different yeah like legal setup, foundation, OMG, like I have no clue that would help. Yeah, I mean certainly in the United States we're a five hundred three C three or whatever that is, which that makes it possible for people to donate to us and. You know, it's, it's a different tax classification, but I don't know internationally how how that has any impact. I don't know um, in terms of like model, but the other thing that came to mind when people were talking about crowdfunding the situation and and since you have a view find, I think this is not necessarily true for the projects across the OLF, like maybe that different projects work in different ways because I'm on the folio project and know, as I was saying earlier, that I think having centralized funding for that is difficult, but for view one it might be easier. But the um, I'm thinking about the the model for funding of open content um, through mm -hmm. projects like Knowledge Unmatched and, and that kind of thing. And it might be interesting to talk to libraries about their experience with that, because those uh, and, and the other, there's a similar um, subscribe to open where you, you're paying the publisher a fee not to access content, but to make that content open for anybody to access. Mm -hmm. And I know that that can be challenging in, in similar ways to, to how it's challenging for uh, libraries to fund open source development institutions to fund open source development because there's no product you're buying, you're, you're, you're funding the owner. But it, it would be interesting to look at what's worked and what's not worked for, for knowledge and that. And um, I'm trying to remember the names of other projects, but there are other projects for uh, open publication or funding open publication 
um, that, that I know libraries have been asked to work with and have worked with to some extent. And uh, and they have to overcome these kind of hurdles where you're not paying for product anymore. You're paying for like something that will be available mm -hmm. in the future, uh, as long as everybody pays enough kind of thing. And that's uh, it's like a crowdfunding situation, really. But um, but maybe it's it's one that a lot of libraries in the academic sector at least will already have some familiarity with. Mm -hmm. And maybe just to add, to add on to that and just an idea, I'm saying it out loud for myself and looking already towards my German colleagues here. Um, also, the, the collaboration and the exchange is somehow how you justify spending this money. And you, like, you know, that's part of it. At first, it was like, my colleague didn't know, like, for funding our, our whole year membership. He's like, well, you know, these are funds, you have to justify them. I was like, I wouldn't even know how to justify them. And oh, well, because it's a membership, you don't have to. But I'm still then thinking, okay, if we switch our fees for what we pay for our CLC to something else, I, I point to that, I don't know how to justify that. But maybe other people um, in a similar situation to me have some experience and have already um, had these conversations and had um, and um, we can share then you know, how we um, how we justify spending the funds. I, I can say from my experience at Villanova. Uh, you know, normally I, I'm the sort of person who's fairly cynical about things like mission and value statements, but uh, we did go through a process at Villanova's library leadership to rewrite our mission statement and our value statement and all of that. And during that process, we baked support for openness into all of that and, you know, reinforced through that process how that really is a key part of the library mission and supports library sustainability and all of that which then means that when we want to spend money to support an open project, we can point straight to our most fundamental value statements and say, look, this is what we are about. It really is part of what we do to invest in this. And so that, that can be valuable if you have the opportunity to do it. We have about 15 minutes left. I, I wonder if this is sort of a, a late in the game uh, comment, but has anyone taken any notes on this or should we should we write something oh. up uh, just as, you know, maybe a summary of our ideas or possible next steps? Um, I mean, I have. I can read a night if you like. And, um, it's the also being recorded. Well, so oh, yeah, that is true. That is true. Oh. So. I have I have taken some notes on the on the big ideas, but it is sparse because I was also aware it was being recorded. But I have the uh, the main ideas that we touched on. If a summary would be helpful. Can I just um, add another thing into the mix as a, as a general idea before we go to that summary? which is that um, for Folio, and it's not quite fundraising maybe per se, but it's about how do you contribute resources to an open source project. And in Folio, uh, we've just, I think with the community council have just agreed in the last couple of weeks to press forward with the idea of a developer advocate for the community. And one of the, so this will be somebody whose focus is to help bring developers into the project and um, get them up to speed to be usefully developing the project as quickly as possible. And one of the reasons we felt this was important um, was that we could see that there are a lot of institutions who have maybe very small amount of development resource that they might be able to contribute to an open source project, especially if they're investing in, in the product. Um, but that all of the work at the moment feels like it lives at a big level. Like you want a new, you know, module that does, you know, everything you need in, in some relationship or, or it's like there's really big bits of functionality in existing 
um, modules that need building out and people are already working on it and like being an individual developer with like say you know seven hours a week you can't really impact on that kind of thing um but there are also lots of little tasks that like never get prioritized to the top of the list but actually could be done by somebody without any real you know deep knowledge about functionality you know because it could be a matter of like just relabeling a field or making sure that um you know a, a particular thought is supported or you know there are all kinds of small things in the user interface especially i think that can be picked off by people with some knowledge of javascript and the ability to read the code that's already there and so the developer advocate role is intended to try and make that sort of thing more easy or easier um, and the so i think the other way we can think about fundraising is is not necessarily in terms of money but do people have resources they can contribute whether that's for documentation whether that's for um, development and if so what are the barriers to that actually happening in your particular project whether that's folio or, or viewpoint or um go to be or whatever under the uh, whatever and and i think that's something else uh, it'll be you know i i would say it'll be interesting to see how well we can make that work on the folio side um and uh and to see whether that's you know then a pattern that other projects could follow yeah i think that's that's a great idea honestly from my perspective if i had to choose between T people's time and money i'd rather have the time but the the appeal of the money is the, the prospect of spending it on things where it will be prioritized because the time is always you know third on the list of priorities for someone and you know i understand i have a lot of priorities too but i like how you formulated it and this goes to show like there's never going to be one way right um i think there will always be a need for money as you said it's not just the infrastructure right um but how can then the time be leveraged for things that are really helpful but yeah and there's as you said like there's so many little bits and bobs that are at the bottom and are never going to be done or not, <laughs> not well i mean when, when you've got a choice between making inventory work no, exactly. and then changing the position then updating of the mission name yeah right, so that exactly. it's, so it's coherent exactly. it's <laughs> like there's, there's no you know at the big exactly. funding level uh, the work that, that people are paying to have done yeah. they are obviously going to be saying fix the big stuff that we need fixing yeah. but there's all these little things that will just exactly. improve the product you know substantially if they were all done yeah. but yeah. individually yeah. you know make very little difference exactly. like uh, uh really but but you know it's it's all it, that's a hygiene factor right yeah. the software is yeah. like all of these little things that bug you and for, for library staff, that's bugging them every single day exactly. they're in the system. You know, like it's like for us, for me on the development side, it like bugs me when they tell me it's still a problem every exactly. six months. But you know, it's like exactly. and longer term as well. I my vision at least is that that's also investing in people who can who can help if there's a either a real emergency for lack of a better word. Um ideally not hopefully, you know, inventory is down, but Hey, there are these little bugs, but a number of them. And the more people who know how to how to contribute, then I, I, in my mind, that's part of making something sustainable as well. Avoiding that there's central points of failure, and that we can share the knowledge, um, even if it's not necessarily a knowledge like a person that can be replaced one to one. We are all irreplaceable, right, and unique. Um, but at least more people who can, if need be, can then. Um, scale up eventually if that then gets prioritized when within an institution having people who can make even small fixes to folio means having people who better understand how folio works which could be valuable in any sort of troubleshooting scenario yeah um all right you want to uh dive into that summary chris Certainly. And I apologize for omissions and especially of like proper nouns and names. I'm really bad at catching those just, just personally. From the kind of in rough order of uh, of introduction, uh, Damien initially talked about shared grants where we 
put multiple names, multiple projects on a grant on a grant to increase the likelihood that it gets looked at and accepted. And also, of course, announced that Viewfind is taking open donations at viewfind.org slash donate donates, which is quite good. Mario uh, brought up the idea of doing a crowdfunding thing using an existing platform like Kickstarter or Indiegogo to try to raise money for a particular goal or a particular feature. Um, and it seemed to be an interesting, uh, a, an idea that had uh, some serious interest behind it. Another uh, idea that came up was using what uh, what was dubbed the Wikipedia method of having a banner appear on the viewfind.org sites um, and tying that with some kind of transparency and also the ability there to leverage uh, the fact that we have many, many institutions that are using viewfind to magnify the visibility for any institution that's willing to help in a, do in a donation run or a, a fundraising run. Uh, they can increase the visibility very easily. And there was a bit, touching on a bit of the pride from way earlier of the difference between a library using Viewfind and also contributing to the project of like the, oh, we're not just using it, we're actually a part of this. You know, the pride that comes with that. There were some questions about uh, leveraging the uh, the OLF or a Viewfind Foundation on its own. And then also... The, the final excellent questions of how to contribute resources that aren't particularly money, such as developers, times, specific modules. A little bit of a hint or kind of at least a tangent in my mind there was we support many, many, I, uh, you know, many, many systems, ILS systems, database systems, things like that, that working with them more closely for, uh, for support or receiving support to make sure that their products are fully implemented could have a bit of a hint of a voting with your dollar, as we like to call it in the US. And there was also a running theme throughout that I noticed of what do we spend money on, which raised the question in my mind of the putting the cart the horse. Do we get the money and see what we can spend the money on? So then next year, as Damien was saying, hey, we, we raised, for example, $100,000 in 2023, and we spent it on this. In 2024, we hope if we raise this, this much money, we can do this. Or do we pick specific goals and try to fundraise for them? Do we take developer applications and then fundraise enough money to be able to put that into action? Or do we pick goals like a new theme or a new module or things like that and put useful goals to them and, and fundraise towards them um, as kind of a running theme of uh, what do we spend money on? Do we pick the goals before we have the money? Or do we see how much money we get before we figure out what we can spend it on? as a lightning fast overall summary uh, of the of the conversation. Again, apologies if I missed anything. If there was anything that is obviously glaringly missing from my abbreviated notes, I will one, try to catch it uh, when I watch the recording after the fact, but also feel free to chime up and make sure it gets the visibility that it needs right now. Doesn't seem like you've offended anyone, Chris. Thank you for uh, for taking good notes. Yeah. Okay. I, hopefully, I didn't just talk so fast that nobody understood me. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Well, uh, I'll I'll make sure these notes get cleaned up and put up probably on the Viewfind Wiki, um, or maybe into the the Google Doc that we're going to be using for planning throughout this uh, WolfCon slash Summit. Uh, like the couple of days of of this viewfind uh, part of the conference. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. And I mean, this this session was intended to be broader than just viewfind, but that doesn't mean we can't host the stuff and share it with, with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, any any final thoughts or? Well, then I will thank everyone for taking the time to participate in this. It was a good conversation. I have some ideas I didn't have before, so this is great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for hosting. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll do it again next year. <laughs> thank you. And bye. Bye. Thank you, Hajo. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Helge. And thank you, Johans. Thank you. Bye.